Okay, welcome. Um, so grateful as always to be here with you. And um, I really feel the sense of our community here today. And, and um, if you're coming back by recording, know that there's almost 70 people practicing live in the, in the original version of this. And that's really special. It's really a uh, precious time that we have together. And uh, so it's feeding, it's feeding, it's a, it's a mutuality and there's, there's a co-creation that happens. Uh, the title of today's flow is called Elemental Flow. It's inspired by the time that I just spent in Iceland, which was just extraordinary, uh, in part because the land is so alive, right? So the volcano erupted while we were there, which was amazing. And we're all kind of watching the lava move. Um, the, the waterfalls and the experience of just so much movement, um, the, the glaciers coming through the ice and the, the breaking and the sound of the glaciers calving and the icebergs moving out to the ocean and watching them kind of move in the waves of the ocean and the ice coming up onto the black sand lava beaches the experience of just the, the crispness and the freshness of the air. So I felt very fed by all of these elements and kind of inspired to bring all of that into this particular flow with this recognition that even at times when we're not able to get out into the wilderness, get out into nature, that these elements live inside of us as well. And the tapping in, I like that, Kristen, thank you. The tapping in to the felt experience of earth and fire and water and air and ether, right? Like that all of this is here and it's, it's fuel, it's fueling us, it's, it's energizing and it also supports us, it grounds us, it holds us, kind of like the way that we can sink into mud, right? One of the, the precious experiences in Iceland was what a lot of people go there for, which are the hot springs. And to kind of go into the earth and be held and, and kind of allow all of those minerals to just come in and to know that that's here for us. I mean, that's extraordinary. Sitting in springs that are rolling into the river and navigating how much coolness or warmth you want to you want to find, right? And it's a great metaphor for our practice here, like how we move towards and away. So we are going to explore the qualities of groundedness and stability and really feeling that earthiness. We'll build a little bit of heat and movement with some mobilization of the body and some breath and really feeling some of that fire. We're gonna go with the flow. We're gonna explore the, the natural rhythms of expansion and contraction, just like the water moving and carving canyons and the feeling of uh, the air and the, the clouds expanding and contracting. And overall, I really hope that you'll come away with a sense of a lightness of your own being a and feeling of freedom, uh, which is what I think that we get to experience when we tap into all of that. So, um, you know, one last thing that, that I'll say before I dive us into practice is um, I invite you to sense how these elements, right, earth and water and fire and air and ether, right, they, they alchemize and they can alchemize within you, that you are, are really able to access a transformational quality and to notice where that occurs, right, like what happens in your body belly as you breathe and move, what happens in your heart, in your throat, right? So that this is an embodied spirituality. It's an, it's an embodied journey um, inward. And, uh, and it's also not meant to be forceful, right? It's gentle. So being gentle and trusting that just the breath and the movement and what feels good is, is sufficient. It's enough. Right? You don't have to go towards something that feels aggressive in order to have a transformational experience. Um, in fact, in many ways, I think that's antithetical. So that is, that is what I want to share in terms of, our, uh, of the theme that I'm bringing. 
Um, I have a few intentions that I've written for today's class, and you're welcome to, to join me in them as, as they resonate for you. And the first is, I am aligned with nature as this exists within and around me. I am aligned with nature as this exists within and around me. I think that when we can tune into that deepest connection with the natural world, as, as we are that, as that is us, it allows us to really care for this planet that we share. It really motivates us into how do we do our best in the midst of all that's changing so rapidly. Right? We're talking about heat waves and, and cold snaps and all that's, that's happening and fires and it's scary, right? But we can still tap into and trust that there's a part that we play that creates a better world. The second intention is about that alchemy. I am the alchemist. I am the alchemist capable of transforming the lead of my pain and suffering into the gold of insight and awareness. I am the alchemist capable of transforming the lead of my pain and suffering into the gold of insight and awareness. I love seeing some of you with journals writing and, and that's very meaningful to me. It's you know, certainly one of the ways that I integrate and learn as well and keep playing with these. Let, let these intentions unwind and unfold and, and move with them for the next two weeks till we practice again, right? And, see, and come back and tell me what, what evolves. Okay, as we continue to drop down inward, I'm, I'm gonna offer a poem that really touches me. It's along these same themes. And I'll invite you to receive the poem and just notice what it evokes in you. And this poem, uh, and I'll do my best to pronounce the name of the poet, it's Rabindranath Tagore from the Git Gitanjali. Okay. And um, I believe that he was writing most of his poetry in the late 1800s, early 1900s, although I could double check that. And uh, an Indian poet kind of born of um, intellectuals and, and, and educated and started writing his first poetry. I went to go read about him because I was so touched by this. When um, he started writing his first poems at the age of eight, had his first book of poetry by the age of 17. Right? Just one of those very gifted beings. Okay. The same stream of life. The same stream of life that runs through my veins night and day, runs through the world and dances in rhythmic measures. It is the same life that shoots in joy through the dust of the earth in numberless blades of grass and breaks into tumultuous waves of leaves and flowers. It is the same life that is rocked in the ocean cradle of birth and of death, in ebb and in flow. I feel my limbs are made glorious by the touch of this world of life. I feel my limbs are made glorious by the touch of this world of life. And my pride is from the life throb of ages dancing in my blood this moment. All right. That said, we shall dance together. And if you're just joining and didn't catch the memo, two blocks are handy as is a blanket or cushion for your knee. So 
to start our journey of embodiment and arriving, I'll invite you to take a moment of your palms, feel a little bit of warmth. And if it feels right to you, bringing them to your face. And just begin any intuitive movement with your fingers here, just soothing and smoothing right? across your forehead, your cheeks, maybe across your hairline or your scalp, right? Anything that just kind of in, embraces, embraces your own very head, your very own head with all of the thoughts and with all of the figuring out and just for a moment really kind of laying aside the, the worries and the tension of needing to know. Setting that aside and trusting that we might tap into a, a wisdom that resides in your body, in your instinctual nature that already knows. Maybe massaging your temples, your jaw, your earlobes, in and out. Hmm. Your throat, and you can let your voice go. <sighs> Sigh something out. Maybe rotate your shoulders up and back and down and forward. Ah, give it a good sigh. <sighs> and for your arms today, I'm going to offer a slightly variated variation on our theme, which is to move from your palms toward your heart. So kind of sweeping upward, like a self-lymphatic massage here, just kind of bringing everything into your heart center, across the shoulder. I'm skipping where my mic is, so <laughs> there's a little moment there, but just getting yourself engaged here. And then the opposite arm, just the front side of the arm into the heart, top side, uh, maybe even your hands contact there and uh, and an invitation to take your palms to your belly and breathing in here begin to notice what happens as you slow down your breath and really bring your attention right here to your belly inhale finding some expansion there And exhale, just letting that go, maybe even engaging the muscles of the abdomen to help send the air out. Inhale, expanding here, belly. And exhale. One more like that, inhale right into your navel. And exhale. And if it feels right, bringing your hands to the sides of your ribs, or maybe letting your fingertips kind of rest above your diaphragm and expanding outward, maybe also to the sides of your body. And exhale. And again, you can kind of draw the, the diaphragm back and up on the exhale, helping to send all the air out. Shh. Inhale, belly, and then right into your midsection, your rib cage, your diaphragm. Stretch and exhale, contract. One more like that. And exhale, knowing that stretching across the diaphragm can sometimes be tender. It's a place that we often hold tension. So just being gentle. And then hands to heart center. 
And we're just stacking the breath. So inhale, belly, diaphragm, and then let the breath fill your chest. And exhale, letting it go, letting that muscular engagement help send the air out. Inhale to fill. And exhale to empty. One more like that. Belly, rib cage, chest. And exhale, chest, belly. And letting it all go. And similar breath pattern, letting your arms now just help find that energetic quality. So as you inhale, expand. And exhale, maybe a hand to heart, a hand to belly. Inhale, finding the breath and movement. And exhale, draw it back to center. And again. Lifting up through center and we'll revolve our breath. Finding a few rotations of upper body around your legs, your pelvis, inhaling forward. Exhale, let it go. As you come back, inhale, expand. Exhale, even engaging the abdominal muscles, massaging the digestive organs as you come back and around. One more in this direction. And let's go the other way. Good. And we'll pause for a moment at center, right? Maybe your hands are resting. Maybe they're on your body somewhere. Just notice what's moving already. And tapping into that alchemist that you are. That's already changing. And we'll come into our side bodies. Leaning, I'm gonna invite you to just come towards one side. I'm gonna to go towards the right and just stay on that one side for a moment. Opposite hand can stay on your hip or maybe it comes overhead. The gaze can be down or forward or up. Good. And then lifting back up to center and we'll stay on the same side of the spine. So right ear towards right shoulder, maybe supporting with your hand, just allowing a little bit of, of, of structure and support. Maybe you reach the left fingertips away and sending your breath into the left side of your neck. You might even send your eyes all the way to the right, your eyes all the way to the left, and then slowly back to center, allowing your right hand to help guide your head back to center, and then softening your right hand down. And we'll find side two, leaning into the left, right hand can remain on your hip, 
or up overhead. Feeling that right side body and then lifting back up, we'll come into the right side of your neck, leaning left ear towards left shoulder, maybe supporting with your left hand, walking right fingertips out, finding you can kind of lift the arm and lower it, finding just that right spot, and then sending your breath to the outer right side of your neck. Maybe eyes go to the left. Maybe your eyes go all the way to the right. And then the center and slowly lifting your head back up. Beautiful. All right, from here, an invitation to draw both arms up. And then to just open them as you turn towards the right and inhale up and exhale like wings to the left. And a few more times your rhythm side to side. Good, and this time as you come to the right, pausing here, and if it works for you, hook your right knee with your left hand. And we're gonna lean that left shoulder down towards your left knee or thigh. Your right arm might come up overhead and deepening into that side body exploration here, using your breath here, sending it into sensation. Ah, and then lift and unwind through center to lift your arms and exhale, left side, pause, taking a hold of left knee with your right hand and leaning towards the right, maybe left arm comes overhead. And some micro movements here with your breath, just finding those nooks and crannies, sending attention, awareness, breath right there. And then as you're ready, lifting and returning to center. This time, lean back just a tad to bring the soles of your feet together if that feels okay for you. And this time, a chance to greet your feet. So bringing your hands to your feet and a little self-massage, some love right there to the souls that greet the earth. All that your feet do for you, your ankles. You might take this self-massage up your calves, inside of your knees, around your knees. And maybe even across the tops or sides of your thighs to your low back. Just again, kind of moving towards the heart. And you might even sweep from your feet, legs, right up to heart center again. Just giving a little bit of love right there. And one more time through. And then from here, I'll invite you to take your right leg out and just a few sweeping movements. Again, you can use your hands here if that feels comfortable for you. Moving forward and back, it's early in practice. We're greeting the back of your right leg and just noticing what's awake for you here. And then an invitation to kind of move your leg to the side or turn your upper body and greeting your side body once again. And you can kind of lean in with, towards the right leg, your shoulder coming towards the knee, maybe your left arm overhead. And gaze down, forward or up. And 
And then lifting up here, we're gonna lean into your left hip just enough to bend through your right knee and settle your right, right thigh towards your left foot. The right foot is behind you. So we're in a deer shape here. And this time, just a gentle movement in and out of your hips. So you can take your right hand on your right hip if you like. We're turning to the left and the hip begins just to follow. And you might even follow with your arm. Right? Just notice how your breath supports you. No right or wrong way to breathe here. Good, one more like that. And then as we return to center, leaning on your left leg again, just to turn the right leg around, this time holding foot and knee with your hands and a few circular movements here into your right hip socket. Just gentle, nothing forced. If you're eager for more sensation, you can bring the leg closer, but we're really going for that sense of fluidity. So just following that for one more round. And then settling right sole of foot next to left sole of foot back into cobblers. And we'll switch sides. Taking left leg forward and some sweeping motions as you just kind of inch toward a forward fold shape reading the sensations along the back of your left leg. Using your hands to wake up sensory awareness. And then as we lift up, we'll turn either leg out or upper body towards the right as we lean into a side bend here. And again, nothing forced, it's early on. Right hand might stay on your hip or progress overhead. Right. Finding your own intuitive micro movements inside of any shape. And then lifting up here, leaning into your right hip enough to bend your left knee and set your leg behind. This time deer on side two, as we begin to turn towards the right and your left hip will follow. Just some rhythmic movement, finding your breath and maybe your left arm follows as well. Beautiful. One more like that. Coming back through to center, leaning into right hip, turning left leg around and a hold of your knee and foot and some circular motion here. Feeling a sense of fluidity. I always love to reflect on how all of the joints of the body are filled with synovial fluid and there's intelligence that's right there for you. So we're not trying to create more strain. We're really trying to create more openness and communication. Lovely. Okay. So from here, an invitation to take both feet forward, mats width or so apart, and then we'll just drop both knees side to side. And you might have your hands behind you. You might allow an arm to follow and kind of feel that same quality that we had on the one-sided deer now, just going between the two. And you might even play hands-free, right? Look, ma, no hands. And I can really say that my mom's here, <laughs> right? So just allowing yourself to play a little bit in the sense of freedom 
that will accompany waking up your core and maybe even a little bit of that inner fire. Beautiful. And when you're even on both sides, coming through to center. And I will encourage you to bring a block with you as you come down onto your back. We're not gonna use it quite yet. So just having it in a nearby, okay? And as we arrive on, on the back, as you arrive on your back on your mat, maybe walking your feet out, hips widths or so, or even mats widths or so. And then just letting your knees fall side to side here. And letting yourself kind of be guided by that. So we're not trying to resist the initiated movement, but your hips can follow, maybe your shoulder follows. Mm. Okay. And slowly coming back through to center, pausing for a moment, maybe a hand on your belly, a hand on your heart. All of that movement now has an inner current and it's well worth our time to pause and sense. In this sensory moment, in this arriving, you're recollecting yourself to be even more present through this journey. And when you feel ready to move on, an invitation to bring both feet off the floor and to take a moment with your hands and provide a little bit of resistance. So you're gonna press knees into hands, hands pressing back into knees and really feeling here that kind of earthy quality of resistance, right? It's good, it's good for us. Feel this in the lowest part of your belly. Feel a little bit of a shake perhaps. And we're gonna switch the resistance hold, wrapping around the tops of your knees, pressing your knees into your hands, let your hands resist. And then noticing what wakes up on the backside of your legs, your buttocks, glute muscles. And then soften and one of each, right? So let's take left hand to the top of the knee, right hand to the front of your knee if that makes sense. And we're gonna press right knee into your hand and left knee into your hand, press, 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 feeling this little opposition in your hips and then let that go. Let's take the opposite side. So one hand's on the upper side and the other on the front side and press, press, press. And then let that go and hands to the outer knees, outer thighs here and press. Your hands are gonna resist. And it's like, I don't know, when we've gone to the gym and we have those abductor, adductor machines, just pressing outward, resist with your arms. Woo, that's hard. And then let it go. And our block is gonna help in the opposite direction. So now block in the inner thighs and pressing inwards towards the block. All right, so waking up that deep inner core line in your legs, hands behind your head. And if you'd like, we'll wake up a little bit of inner fire, lifting up through the head and shoulders as we exhale and inhale down. Good. Your rhythm, your breath, and one more here. 
We're gonna lower down through your upper body, an invitation to take your feet to the floor. And adding on to this motion, we're going to exhale, perhaps bringing your hands forward. Inhale to lift your feet. Exhale, lowering your feet, lift a little higher with your upper body and inhale down. Now, some of you have done this with me before and you know your rhythm. Inhale, feet, exhale, lower, lift a little higher. Inhale as we sweep up. It's, if it's too much on your neck, hands behind your head is totally fine. Okay, I'm gonna speak it through again. Inhale, exhale as we lift. Inhale to lift the feet, legs. I think I got that backwards. <laughs> Let me do this again. All right, inhale as we come back. Let's exhale as we lift. Inhale your feet. Exhale, lower, lift a little higher. Inhale down. All right, and again, exhale to lift. Inhale your feet. Exhale, lower, lift a little higher. And inhale down. Last one like that. Exhale, upper body, inhale, legs. Exhale, feet down, lift and lower, inhale. This time hands behind your head if they're not there already. And on an exhale, turning towards the right. Inhale through center and down. Exhale to the left. Inhale through center and down. And if that's enough, keep going there. Otherwise, adding on just like we did before with the legs. Exhale right. Inhale the legs at an angle. Exhale feet. Come back through center and inhale down. Exhale to the left. Inhale legs. Exhale. Come through center. Inhale down. Exhale right. Lifting legs. Exhale through center. Inhale. And last one like this. Exhale left. Inhale legs. Exhale lower legs come through center. And inhale down. This time block can come to the side. And drawing your right knee in, finding that resistance hold on the top of the right knee or shin and extending your left leg long. So left leg can be on the ground or I recommend hovering here and just exploring for a moment, pressing right leg into your hands and then maybe lift your left leg and lower, right? Moving with your breath. Okay, last one on this side. And this time bending through your left foot, your left knee, and taking your hands to the top of your right leg. So that resistance stress, stretch, right? That resistance press, and then press into your left foot, lifting your hips if you'd like. So it's a half bridge with a strong resistance in that right leg and notice the back of your left leg for a moment. Come back to breath and let's lower it down. I know I'm feeling a little bit of the shake, perhaps you are too, and what a great sign of aliveness right there. This time we're taking the left knee and we're clasping on the top, we're pre pressing the knee into hands, extending your right leg long, you might keep it down or you might hover. And then adding the movement, inhale to lift, exhale to lower. Okay, 
and then we're going to bend through the right leg. We're going to press on the top of your left leg, keeping it bent. Press, press, press with your hands, with your knee, and then pressing into your right foot, lifting your hips. A lot going on in this one. Feel it, enjoy it. It's brief, it's temporary. And then we settle it down to the earth, letting that one go. Whew. All righty. Um, one more bridge like movement here on our backs. I'm going to invite you to just flow a little bit like that you know, waterfall or water flowing into the ocean like a wave, right? So we're just going to lift your hips, let your arms follow if you'd like, and exhale to lower. Ah. Really feeling that quality of earth fire, water, and air. One more here. Ah, beautiful. Sweeping both feet off the floor, hands behind your knees, and maybe a few rocks on your spine. Let it feel good. And rather than rocking up and across your shins, the invitation is to come up to sitting with your feet ahead of you. So this time with your hands behind, maybe turning your fingertips towards your hips, finding a lift of your heart, and maybe lifting your hips as well into a reverse tabletop and an invitation to move with the breath in and out. Maybe inhale as you lower your hips, exhale to lift. And all of these are options, right? If you wanna stay and linger in that reverse tabletop, if you wanna stay with your hips on the earth and say, nope, I don't wanna lift, that's all welcome here, right? Honoring your body. Good. And then hips to earth. An invitation, if your palms, if your fingertips were facing you, maybe turn your palms out even at an angle here. Lots of room for your shoulders to create a lift of your chest. And again, an option to add a breath of fire, a rapid inhale, exhale through the nose, cultivating, yeah, the fire element and drawing your navel towards the spine. So it'll look and sound like, I'll offer a rhythm, find your own though, really listen to your body. And if that breath doesn't work for you, long, deep breathing right here is perfectly great. Inhale here. And exhale. And two more like that, just nice, deep, full breaths. Maybe even kind of rocking your spine a little bit. One more. And then this time, rocking over your shins, We'll meet in a tabletop. And this first moment or two in this shape is just for you just to let yourself find how you want to integrate the spinal awakening, the sensory awakening, the core awakening, the breath, right? How does your body want to move and integrate in a manner that brings you home. Mm. 
And you are welcome to stay with that free form movement. And if you're ready to go into some more guided movement, I'm gonna encourage you to curl your toes under and walk yourself back so that your hips are gonna stack on your heels. This is toes pose. And we can, can use the hands here to spread the toes a little bit, opening up through the bottoms of your feet, your soles once again, saying thank you. Thank you, thank you. Helping me walk through the world carrying me. And sometimes this posture can be intense and you can always lean away from your feet a little bit, right? And some of you are like, no, I want a little more. Maybe you wrap your hands around and clasp your hands and create a little bit of that openness across the heart in this shape. And we'll unwind out of this shape, untucking the toes, maybe rotating your feet around the ankles in each direction for a moment. And some of you are already guessing where we're going next, a little bit of shin and ankle opening. So sitting onto the tops of your feet, which can also be kind of intense. So these are things that will change over time. If you're looking <clears throat> for signs of evolution, kind of watching for what happens as you continue with your practice and it becomes a little more accessible. And right now, if you need your block to sit on, great, right? So we've got options to create kind of movement towards change. And if you're looking for a little bit more front ankle shin opening, you might lift one knee and settle and the other. Right, opening through the tops of your feet as well. And then maybe rocking onto both feet, lifting both knees. We hiked, um, oh, I, I don't know, maybe 60 miles or so on our trek in Iceland. And these were like essential unwinding tools for me to to certainly recover from some of the climbs that we did. All right, unwinding off of your feet and curling both toes under and for a moment, walking yourself back and lifting your knees off. And again, this might be a lot on your knees. So really honoring and being gentle. And if you need to be higher up, be higher up. And in one form or another, just a little bit of a free form movement. If it feels okay for you, find a little bounce here. And we're not in any of these shapes too long, as you may be noticing. So just be aware what moves, what feels stuck, sending breath there. Good. And then we're coming forward once again. So from our tabletop, Here's the invitation. Left leg can come back. You can keep your knee bent for today. Exhale under your body. Inhale back. Exhale towards your left shoulder. Inhale back. Under. Listen carefully. Inhale back. And exhale, step your foot down into we'll call half squat. So you can have a pretty wide stance. Left foot can angle out. I'm sitting on my right heel. If that's too much, that block can support you here. So you're sitting higher, not as much compression in your joints. And for a moment, just greeting those spinal movements, side to side, forward and back. Maybe a open twist in each direction. Lovely. And then from here, and this is where that cushion under your knee might come in handy, we're going to lift up. Okay. So now I've got my right, my, my weight on my right knee, my left foot out to the side. If you're familiar with an extended side angle, it's like a modified extended side angle. And we're going to lean into that left thigh lunge here. But it's 
to the side body. Right? And just a few movements and contracting into the left side body as you open the right. And then inhale up and over, planting your right hand. And for a few breaths here, just breathing into a modified side plank, allowing yourself to feel that whole long line of the left side of your body, grounding into the outer left foot, reaching with your fingertips. And then listen carefully. We're keeping the left leg as it is, and we're gonna walk the upper body forward. So upper body's back in our tabletop, left leg is out to the side. And then you might just rock a little forward and back, greeting the inner line of your left leg. Good. And inhale to sweep your left arm and exhale right under and through, but we're moving with the breath. We're not staying there. So inhale to open and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Feeling that quality of earthiness in your hips that supports you to connect to the flowing quality of water and air. And then two hands to the earth. You can bring your left knee to meet your right. Maybe remove the cushion if it's there. And it's a little bit of movement of your spine. We'll find side two. Inhale, sweeping your right leg behind and under. Inhale. Exhale to right shoulder. Inhale. And under. Inhale. Listen carefully, we're stepping right foot to the earth and we're coming back into our half squat. Right? And finding your variation, right? getting into a little bit of that instinctual body here, maybe your spinal movements. And you might add that cushioning under your left knee so that as we lift up, we've got some nice support and we'll find that in a 90 degree angle or so with your right leg. Leaning toward the right and you can let your kind of hips be a little bit part of that motion. So you can kind of lean into your right foot in a way. Squeezing into your right side body as you open across the left side. And then up, around, and over. Planting left hand and reaching long. Ah. <sighs> And then we're going to walk upper body forward as the lower body stays stable. Okay. And then you might rock a little bit back and forth. And maybe finding that fern frond here as we open and unfurl and curl back into self. Awakening with each new day to the sun and recognizing that that curling inward, that contraction is an equal part of the expansion. Beautiful, one more like that. From here, placing right knee back to meet the left. 
This time, invitation to take your toes together, your knees wider, and to settle your hips towards your heels. A nice wide lead child's pose or wisdom pose. And in this one, you might make it a little watery. You might slide a little side to side. You might give a little bit of a ah, sigh. You might even feel a little undulation of your spine here. And then perhaps settling into stillness for a few breaths. Beautiful. When you're ready, coming back through tabletop, curling your toes under, and an invitation to lift your hips. Now in our first downward facing dog, taking your time, maybe bending one knee and really reaching the opposite heel to the earth and switching it out, opening up through your calf muscle, the backs of your legs, maybe bending both knees deeply, lengthening through your low spine, maybe reaching both heels towards the earth. And an invitation here to draw your right leg back and behind. We're gonna bring your knee in towards your chest, but for the purpose of some knee circles, just like we did seated, allowing your knee to come forward, up, back and around. Just feeling that sense of fluidity in your hip joint, I'm not trying to make anything happen, nothing forced. And then eventually as your knee comes forward, gazing forward and stepping through to a lunge, you might want your blocks nearby. And as we lower that left knee, you might settle it onto something soft, soft landing, always welcome here. So you get to choose blocks or no blocks, cushion or no cushion, but a few movements here, intuitive, guided by sensation, in and out of your hips, breathing your hamstring, And then perhaps walking yourself up and kind of similar movement, but just letting your kind of arms be part of this. Just opening your heart in and out of your lunge here, feeling that connection between your hips and your heart. Good. And then from here, I'll show this from a different angle for a moment, you can have your hand on your hip and then just find a little side bend in this shape. And you might even take one of those blocks supporting you here, just depending on what feels good for you and sensing your left hip flexor, wherever else the sensations travel. And so long as it's not pain, right? We're going for the edge of sensation in any of these shapes. Lifting back up, we'll find an open twist. And then maybe left elbow to the outside of your right thigh. And maybe palms together. So really feeling out what's going to support you here. And just like before, you can kind of come in and out of the lunge a little bit. So you get to feel your way into this shape. Good. We're gonna unwind our twist. We're gonna plant hands onto the earth and right foot can step back to meet your left. Back into downward facing dog. Greeting left and right sides once again. 
And this time the invitation is to lift your left leg, exhale, knee towards your chest, and then finding some hip circles here. Gazing forward, stepping forward and through. And you get to add in those support elements as you like. Finding your low lunge, breathing in and out. Very earthy here, and connecting down into hips, maybe lifting up, finding a little bit of that flow and letting the earth support the expansion. If you'd like, staying lifted, hand to side body or to block and finding a little bit of an opening right here. And then perhaps finding an open twist, totally great place to stay, or maybe taking right elbow to outside of your left thigh. Maybe hands come to touch. And from here, maybe a little bit of that movement in and out of the lunge. Always knowing that Twists can be sensitive, so really honoring and listening to your body. Backing out is always wiser if it feels kind of uh, like nerve, nerve discomfort there. Okay. And we're gonna unwind, untwist, hands to the earth, and stepping back, downward facing dog. So no. one thing I love about yoga is that every posture begins with our connection to the earth. That's our foundation. So feeling those points of contact, hands and feet. And then from there, we can find lift. Easing forward and a nice savoring, sauntering walk to the front of your mat. If you'd like a moment of a halfway lift and lengthen and exhale the fold. Inhale all the way to standing. Mm, mountain pose, uh, feeling that connection between the earth beneath you and the sky above, those realms of potential. And you, the one that engages, that creates, that takes form in this world. A few spinal movements here to the right and left. Maybe an open twist. And drawing your arms back, maybe making contact behind your body here to lift through your heart. And exhale, forward fold. Softening hands by way of your sacrum to the earth. Inhale for a halfway lift. And exhale, planting your hands, stepping back. From a high plank, I invite you to lower your knees, your chest, your chin. And then slither forward, watery into cobra. And finding a few sacred movements here of your spine, your own rhythm, your own range of motion. Mm. 
And then as you lower down, pressing into hands, coming back through table, maybe pressing back even towards child and then back into downward facing dog. With that quality of water here, allowing yourself to imagine you're a wave coming to shore, going from high, from down dog towards high plank, bending your knees, recessing, retreating, and coming forward again. And one more. Coming back through downward dog and your choice how you want to come to the front of your mat. You can walk, you can hop, right? Listening to how does your body want to make the next transition. <sighs> Taking your time to arrive there. And when you do, once again, a halfway lift and a fall. <sighs> Inhale all the way to standing. And exhale, releasing your arms here. So I'll offer up an ukatasana shape, a bending of your knees. Now my feet are hip widths apart. You can feel out for your body what's gonna be most nourishing and supportive for you. Inhale to sweep your arms and exhale, a little fire. Good. Exhale. Stay here. Maybe clasp your hands. Open through your heart. Maybe lift your heels. Drinking bird. Finding balance. And then softening your feet to the earth. Inhale, sweeping all the way to stand. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. And exhale your way to downward facing dog. I'll offer up, stepping back, waving forward from high plank to low plank and rolling over your toes for upward facing dog, knowing you can always come to the earth for cobra or skip all of the above. Coming back through downward facing dog. And inhaling here through your right leg as you lift and exhale, stepping forward. This time, walk your feet wide enough so that as you lift up into crescent lunge, you're not on a tightrope. Okay, nice, wide, supportive base. There's a balancing element in this shape. Inhale, perhaps sweeping your arms up overhead. And exhale as we open twist towards the right. Inhale, maybe reaching into an exalted warrior, hand to your sacrum or the back of your right thigh as you gaze behind. And on an exhale, taking left elbow towards the outside of your right knee. You can always descend the left knee, reading where we've been. Maybe palm to palm, finding your breath here. And the unwinding from this motion is big. So following all the way up around the five-pointed star. From our five-pointed star in celebration of this magnificent world, We'll find volcano pose. <laughs> On an exhale, descending your arms. Inhale through center, pulling up earth, fire, water, air. And exhale. Good. Inhale. Beautiful. Hands to heart center. We're going to turn over your left 
foot, listen carefully towards what might be the back of your mat, okay? Extending your arms here, finding a warrior two shape. Coming back to your breath. And then inhale, reaching away. And exhale, extended side angle. We've been in a variation of this with our knee down. Touching in again. Inhale, sweeping away, this time lengthening your left leg. And exhale, trikonasana, triangle. Now, if you want to pull one of those blocks around, you can, or just using that nice support of your shin, allowing upper body to be supported to open and lift, feeling the stability of this triangle shape, this earthy shape. Slowly, we soften through the knee, through your gaze, and exhale to the earth, right here to the back of your mat. This time, listen carefully. Inhale, lift your left leg up. And right forward and through, exhale. Stepping wide, so as we come into crescent, we've got a nice, firm, wide base of your legs. Maybe keeping your hands here on your hips. Maybe drawing your arms up overhead. And then turning, finding this open twist towards the left. Inhale, exalted. Placing your hand to your sacrum, find that lift and lengthen. And exhale, twisting. Knowing that you can lower your knee, you can stay in that open twist if that's better for your back. And when you're ready, that big transition all the way around into five-pointed star. This time, lowering your hands, interlacing them behind you and turning your toes slightly in. Inhale to lift through your heart. And exhale, a forward fold. Maybe a micro bend in your knees. You can even roll your shoulders a little bit with the clasped hands. You can always let go of that if it's too much. And then softening your hands to the earth by way of your sacrum, using that support of hands to earth to shift your weight to one side and then the other. So you might stay quite high, right? Just feeling that inner leg line, you might lower down and come into a variation of that half squat and feeling the inner leg line on the opposite side. Your own rhythm side to side. One more time. And when you feel balanced between the two sides, coming through center, exhale, fold. And if you need a little bend in your knees as we lengthen the spine and come all the way back to standing, turning over the right leg back towards the front of your mat. This time left heel is down. We're preparing for warrior two as you lift your arms. Pausing in the familiarity, feeling all of those elements within you, around you. Mm -hmm. 
Inhale, reaching away from your front bent leg. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, lengthening through your right leg, reaching away. And exhale, Trikonasana, long reach, rotating your arms, block or no block. And softening your gaze, softening your right knee, inhale. And exhale, descending to the earth, stepping right foot back to meet the left. Here we are, downward facing dog. And one more transition to the front of your mat, however you want to get there, walking, hopping. Inhale, halfway. And exhale to fold. Coming all the way to standing for one more balancing shape before we come to the earth. And the balancing sequence, I maybe will call it, that will um, kind of integrate all that we've been playing with here is gonna be a transition between uh, kind of three different shapes, but they're all, all linked to each other. So I'm gonna just show you really quick what we're moving between. I'm gonna show you at an angle because it may be the best way to show this. So we're gonna come into, it's much quicker than we'll do it, into Natarajasana, into dancer. Ooh. And I do it quickly, I got a gaze. Okay, so we're coming into dancer and we're going to transition from this into a very traditional Natrajasana shape here. So we're bringing that right leg forward and we're just kind of hovering, right? If you've ever seen a statue or you can look this up after class of Natrajasana, Natrajasana is standing inside of a kind of ring of fire, right? Very transformational. It's this ability to dance with the kind of creation of life. And we'll round this out. So we'll come into a standing tree and really root down before we put both feet on the floor. So that's where we're going. A little bit of a playful demo, but use a wall or a chair or do what feels right and drop what doesn't. So standing two feet on the earth, the invitation is to draw your arms up and find that open twist. From that open twist, lifting your left knee and then sending it behind to catch your, excuse me, your right foot, oy, right foot, catch it with the right hand. So your thumb of the right hand can face back as you're catching your right foot, catching the inner arch. From here, maybe left hand to heart as you bend your left knee and begin to kick into your right. So standing here, maybe you reach that right arm back out. Really feeling yourself as that alchemist capable of transforming all of these elements into something new, into that gold of awareness and insight. And we're gonna come back forward and through and that moment of balancing in this wild creation shape before settling right foot to the inside of your left leg and maybe palm to palm to heart. You might even really feel that your fingertips too can help you root downward. Or maybe you feel that reach upward, sending those roots down as you simultaneously reach and lift. And then slowly descending, most important part, back to earth. A moment, left and right sides, just sensing what's here for you. 
And let's find this on side two. Okay, grounding. Inhale, sweeping. This time, an open twist to your left. I'll say this carefully. Grounding into your right foot, lifting left leg and catching left foot. Maybe right hand to heart as you begin to kick. And the kick is not important, right? Doesn't matter how deep, how far. Maybe you reach the right fingers, finding your edge. And then slowly release as we come forward and hover in something new. Maybe something's taking form and you don't quite know what it is yet. And that's okay. And then slowly into tree. What we can trust, the stability beneath you. Fingertips, maybe down. Maybe you press with your foot as you lift a little higher. And then slowly soften two feet on the earth. You might integrate that with stillness or you might shake out your legs and your arms and uh, something go. Uh, I will invite you to make this transition rather simply all the way back down to the earth. And as you arrive onto your mat, check in. Once again, kind of collecting yourself, recollecting yourself right here. What might you need to really allow you to find completion of this practice for you? Are there any final movements, maybe drawing both knees into your chest and hugging around your shins, feeling that bija, that seed pose of potential? Maybe you're wanting more expansion and you follow that into any shape or form, and it doesn't have to have a known Sanskrit name or yoga pose, right? Just following any final movement integration because it simply feels good. And following your instinct and intuition until eventually perhaps a final integration in stillness feels right. And then maybe extending one leg and the other, arms by your sides, palms facing up, a little lift of your heart. And uh, letting it all go. Here's a lovely place to really sense and feel how the earth has your back. And perhaps even imagining a soft, welcoming earth, one that's like those hot springs in the mountains or the muds that just welcome you in. You can sink just a little bit deeper. And I invite you to stay here. 
Really receiving one more time the words of the same stream of life. The same stream of life that runs through my veins night and day, runs through the world and dances in rhythmic measures. It is the same life that shoots in joy through the dust of the earth in numberless blades of grass and breaks into tumultuous waves of leaves and flowers. It is the same life that is rocked in the ocean cradle of birth and of death, in ebb and in flow. I feel my limbs are made glorious by the touch of this world of life. And my pride is from the life throb of ages dancing in my blood this moment. Please take as much time as you need to really integrate this flow through the elements, this elemental flow. If you are ready to make a final transition back to sitting, finding some gentle movements, wiggling your fingers and your toes, maybe rotating through your shoulders, your wrists, your ankles, and eventually rolling to one side or rocking on your spine and coming back to seated. As we close out this practice together, I'll once again invite you to sit with these words. I am aligned with nature as this exists within and around me. I am the alchemist capable of transforming the lead of my pain and suffering into gold of insight and awareness. Namaste. <laughs>